Hello, everybody. My name is Ross Samin, and I live in Sacramento, along with my wife and two college kids. I am a business owner, and I run Capital Bowl in West Sacramento. It is an honor to be here today and represent Iranian American community of Northern California. I want to thank every one of you for being here today, and a special thanks goes to our dear guest, who truly represent American values. They continue to speak the truth so passionately and courageously. Their stance for justice is extremely helpful during difficult times and most encouraging during celebration times. Our community is proud to be part of many Iranian American community across the United States. We have been involved in many activities including working with our Congress, organizing conferences, briefings, symposiums, holding rallies in California, New York, and Washington, D.C. Our, our mission has been to actively dis educate the public, religious leaders, public officials in the United States about serious violation of human rights that has been taking place in Iran for the last 35 years. Let me tell you a few words about my personal experience. After the fall of the Shah, I went to Iran for a visit. One day, as I was walking in the street, I ran into some boys and girl, young boys and girls selling uh, Mujahideen's daily paper named Mujahid. All of a sudden, they were attacked and brutally beaten by the gangsters loyal to Ayatollah Khomeini, who mobbed them. As I stood stunned and helpless, the incident triggered my curiosity about MEK. As I dared to obtain my first copy of the paper that day, when I got home, I read the whole paper from A to Z. What really got me hooked was an article written by Masoud Rajavi. I really liked it. Since that, day, I felt, since that day, I felt that the first time, there is someone who is speaking for me. And for the first time, I felt compel, compelled to do something. When I, when I returned back to US to finish my studies, I found many other students with similar views. Since then, I have never ceased to raise my voice, which has since become our voice. So for that matter, I think it is safe to say we know mullahs very well. They are, <clears throat> we know mullahs very well because we personally experience them. They are reactionary people whose mentality belongs to centuries ago, to, list, uh, to say the least. They have not, cannot, and will not be part of the civilized world. History has proven the reform is impossible under this regime. Every time the regime feels threatened, they play reform game in order to get some, to get some relief. And unfortunately, they have found willing allies in the, in the West to play this game. As far as the Iranian people are concerned, the mullahs use all of the Iranians' financial resources to, to suppress population export terrorism, and help, help dictators and terrorist organizations like Syria's Bashar Assad, Iraq's Nouri al-Maliki, and Lebanese Hezbollah. Loosening the sanction is tantamount to ringing the bell and temporarily saving the life of mullahs who are already on the ropes by Iranian people. President Obama. If you really believe that Iranian, gov Iranian regime is the world's leading state sponsor of terrorism, why would you want to loosen the sanction? Why have you abandoned the Iranian resistance, Iranian opposition, our loved ones in Camp Ashraf and Camp Liberty, despite America's pledge to protect them? Why do you continue negotiation, negotiate with such a government from position of the weakness. The world must remember 
that mullahs killed more than 120,000 people in Iran because of their political views. The mullahs are aiding Bashar Assad in killing hundreds in a day in Syria. No American should forget that it was the Iranian regime behind killing of Americans in Lebanon, in Kobar Tower in Saudi Arabia, and thousands in Iraq and Afghanistan. As far as vast majority of Iranians in the country and in the United States are is concerned, the easing international sanction against the mullahs of Tehran sending wrong message and is counterproductive. Let us not forget that if it were not for the nuclear revelation of MEK and impact of the sanction on the regime, the clerics would not have accepted even one step retreat in their nuclear ambition. The international community, in particular United States, must keep its vigilant and act firmly. The only, accept, the only acceptable result of nuclear negotiation must be complete dismantling of the regime's nuclear weapon program and IAEAs and further access to a snap inspection of the older regime suspected sites. At the end, I'm going to leave you with this. Since my first encounter, those young messengers of peace and democracy often come to my mind. I can still visualize their innocent but determined faces. I wonder what happened to them. Are they alive? or they were killed by Khomeini, Khomeini or current Justice Minister of Khatami, uh, Rouhani, which is Mustafa Pur Muhammadi, who was on the three members panel of judge tasked with the, send, with the sending 30,000 political prisoners to gallows in 1988. Did they, man, did they manage to leave the country and join Camp Ashraf? If they did, why the, were they killed by Maliki in Ashraf or by the missiles fired, by camp, uh, fired at Camp Liberty? Are they now in Camp Liberty? I know that I will never know the answer to, those que to these questions, but I do know and I remember their message and I will never give up spreading their message. I will never give up supporting our heroes in Camp Liberty. And I'd like to ask everybody in this hall and whoever is or will be watching this event, double your effort to help this good cause. The goal is one thing. Human rights and the goal is one thing. Regime change in Iran by Iranian people for democracy and human rights in Iran. The Iranian people certainly deserve that. I am sure with our effort and leadership of Mrs. Rajavi, we can get there soon. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you.